Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought we'd take a quick look at another stylish, turn-based rogue light that's recently caught my eye. Today I thought we'd talk about Deep Sky Derelicts by Snowhound Games. So, what is Deep Sky Derelicts? Well, it's a science fiction roguelite RPG that takes place in a grim dystopian future among the stars, featuring a heavy focus on both gritty comic book style visuals and a card-based combat system. In Deep Sky Derelicts, the player takes control of a small scavenging team, hiring a squad of three space-born mercenaries to go rummaging around through the bowels of ancient derelict ships. The bulk of the game takes place aboard these ships, as the player guides their squad through the twisting and turning corridors, searching for loot and fighting off threats posed by pirates, alien pests, ancient robots, and even stranger things. In Deep Sky Derelicts, humanity has been scattered across the stars. The privileged few live on mirror worlds, habitable planets with fresh air and plentiful supplies of food and water but the less fortunate are instead considered stateless, forced to live their lives hopping from one derelict space station to the next, constantly struggling to find enough credits to keep their life support systems running. The player's squad is made up of some of these unfortunates, the so-called stateless, who make their living scavenging derelict spacecrafts. During the opening of the game, the player is approached by the sub-governor of a space station who offers to grant them citizenship on a mirror world in exchange for helping him track down the fabled Mothership, a ship which is rumored to be carrying the technological secrets of the ancients. The player is given three derelict spacecrafts as a starting point, with orders to get into their navigation computers and dig up any potentially useful information that may point them towards the location of the Mothership. If the player can accomplish this, then the sub-governor will slowly improve their list of privileges, giving them access to a slowly growing number of more difficult derelicts to explore. While the player does have a set of story-based goals, they can also take on optional side contracts while visiting the sub-governor's space station. These contracts will grant relatively simple secondary objectives, such as collecting robot parts or stealing eggs from dangerous alien creatures, and they provide an additional source of income. Likewise, the player will also encounter NPCs while exploring, some of whom may also provide them with additional secondary objectives while they're fighting their way through derelict spacecrafts. And this, of course, brings us to what the player will be spending the bulk of their time doing in Deep Sky Derelicts, exploring dangerous, abandoned spacecrafts. Each derelict spacecraft has a semi-randomized interior, which the player has to explore while they search for loot and seek to fulfill their various contracts. When the player first arrives on a derelict, they'll only be able to see a small portion of the map, but more will slowly be revealed as the player explores, though the player can also speed things up by making use of the scan feature, which can quickly reveal surrounding rooms, as well as potential loot and potential threats. But the player can't rely too heavily on the scan function, because it will rapidly deplete their stores of energy, which is what keeps their life support systems running. When the player first arrives on a derelict, they'll normally have 100 energy, which will slowly deplete as they explore or scan their surroundings. They can refill their energy meter with one-use energy cells, but if the meter ever drops to zero, then that's it. The squad's life support fails, everyone dies, and the game is over. And since the game makes use of a single autosave slot, that means the player has to start over again from scratch. As the player explores derelicts, they'll occasionally encounter NPCs. Some of these NPCs will be relatively peaceful, giving the player valuable information or secondary objectives, but the vast majority of the NPCs the player encounters will instead be hostile. This, of course, brings us to one of the other main features of the game, the card-based combat system. In Deep Sky Derelicts, combat is handled one turn at a time, with each combatant taking a single action per turn. During an individual combatant's turn, they can play one of the action cards that are randomly drawn from their action deck, or they can spend energy to draw additional cards. Once their action has been resolved, the next character in the initiative order gets to go, and so on until everyone has taken at least one action and combat moves on to the next turn. The action decks are essentially the lifeblood of the game. 
Every character has an action deck made up of cards determined by their character's class, as well as the gear they have equipped, so it's important for the player to carefully examine most pieces of loot that they find to see if the attribute bonuses and cards offered by that piece of loot might fit into their preferred combat strategies. There are six different character classes for the character to choose from when they assemble their squad, and different classes have different strengths and weaknesses. Trackers and Bruisers, for example, gain the most benefits from weaponry cards, while most other classes will gain benefits from a combination of card types, including medical cards, mental cards, scavenging cards, and tech cards. Each class does have a distinct specialization, but it's important to know that you can swap out certain pieces of gear, such as the toolkits, to create hybrid action decks. For example, trackers are normally built to focus on dealing out damage, but they could gain access to medical cards by swapping out their weapon tool for a medical tool. Granted, they would never be as good with medic cards as an actual medic, but it still allows the player some greater flexibility when they're customizing their team, especially since there are six classes to choose from, but only three slots on the player's squad. And really, tactical flexibility is an important part of the game, while the player can certainly try to power their way through combat encounters with nothing but raw damage, they're far more likely to find success using a combination of tactics. Buffing their allies, debuffing their enemies, cycling their action decks, and carefully choosing when to use certain types of attacks. Combat in Deep Sky Derelicts can quickly take a turn for the worse, and if the player's whole squad gets wiped out, then that's it. Game over so it's also important for the player to know when it's time to cut and run. Fortunately, the player can always return to the nearest space station when they need to rest, recover, or unload their latest batch of salvage. The space station has a few basic commodities to offer, including the bar where the player can turn in completed contracts or pick up new ones, as well as the pawn shop where they can buy and sell goods. There's also a medical center, where the player can pay to get their injured or incapacitated mercenaries patched up, though this can quickly become very expensive. So, as always, it's best to make sure the player knows when to cut and run, or else they might eventually find themselves so short on credits that they can no longer afford to keep their life support systems running. And of course, you know what that means. Game over. Deep Sky Derelicts can definitely be a harsh and unforgiving game, with one bad run spelling doom for your team of grizzled scavengers. Fortunately, the game seems to be built with replayability in mind. Things like randomized chip layouts, random events, and randomized loot all work to ensure that no two playthroughs are alike, so even if the player loses a game or two, they'll always be able to look forward to a new experience when they start over again. But if the player manages to keep their team going, then they'll slowly but steadily accrue both loot and experience points. Loot can provide passive bonuses and additional cards for the player's action decks, but experience points will allow them to have a bit more control over the growth of their mercenaries. Each time a mercenary gains a level, they receive two ability points, which can be used to purchase ranks in a small assortment of class-specific skills, with more perks unlocking each time they gain an additional level as well as further class specialization options becoming available once a mercenary has hit level 4. And hey, if the player can keep the team running long enough, maybe they'll even find that fabled mothership, so they can retire to a life of luxury on some paradise planet. Sure, that's not very likely, but it's good to have dreams. Beyond the story and the gameplay mechanic, one of the most striking things about Deep Sky Derelicts is its gritty retro-futuristic aesthetic. The music is serviceable and does a reasonably good job of setting the mood, but the art style is exceptional. Character designs and environments are all reminiscent of gritty old-school comics like ABC Warriors and Judge Dredd. This is something that's even further amplified by the stylized animations used during combat, which portray every action as if it were being splashed across a comic book panel. Personally, I think it was this art that first drew me to the project. I'm a big fan of comic books, especially Bronze and Silver Age comics which often featured art very similar to the style presented in Deep Sky Derelicts. But of course, once I actually got my hands on the game, I quickly found a lot of other things that I enjoy about it. Digging through derelict spaceships, fighting off space pirates and haywire robots while desperately trying to scrape together enough credits to keep your life support running? What's not to love? Of course, 
As much fun as I've had playing the game, it's important to remember that what you're seeing here isn't actually a finished product. The final game will sport a full campaign that will take an average of about 10 to 20 hours to complete, with a heavy focus on replayability. But for now, the game is still in active development and only offers a fraction of the final intended experience. The current version of the game only includes about a third of the intended campaign, but this will presumably increase as the game gets closer to final release. There's also an arena mode that the player will be able to use to test out new combat strategies as the developers add additional features to the game. Deep Sky Derelicts will be coming out later this month through Steam's Early Access program. The developers are currently planning to keep the game in Early Access for about half a year, releasing the final product sometime around March of 2018. And for now, the game will only be available for the Windows operating system, but that may change in the future. The developers have made it clear that they're actively looking for fan feedback as development moves forward. While they haven't settled on a final price for the game just yet, the developers have stated that it will be available at a discounted price during the early access period, to encourage people to try it out. So, if this sounds like the sort of game that you might be interested in, then I encourage you to go check it out. You can find out more about Deep Sky Derelicts by visiting the official website or the store page on Steam. Links are in the description.